Okay, hello, this is Dr. Janes, and I um, made a video last week about uh, the NASA launch, and I included some clips from uh, Russian Vid's site and uh, Matthew North and some other sites that are questioning whether uh, NASA's faking these launches, and I, I kind of wonder too, because some of this footage, as, as Russian Vids uh, pointed out, does look like CGI graphics. The landing stuff does look a little bit fake. If, you, if you're really honest about looking at it, uh, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, that's not what I'm going to talk about. I did some calculations, and calculations are always good, right? I mean, how can you argue with the math? And um, I want you to uh, hope you can look at what I'm uh, presenting here and just tell me if I'm wrong. T tell me I'm wrong. Point out what, what, what mistakes I made. Because... Um, According to my calculations, I think that uh, the rocket should have hit the ground. But but let's go into the details, okay? Here's um, and I, you know, I, a lot of people were upset about that last video too. I, I, you know, there's nothing like the truth. Nothing will piss people off more than the truth. I can tell you that. You tell the truth all the time, you'll have no friends because people don't like the truth. You know, the truth makes people very upset. But, uh, you know, is this a popularity contest, or are we concerned about the truth? Because the truth, I believe, you know, in the end will set you free. And so let's see if we can find the truth. And if I'm wrong, please write in and tell me. No, no, no you're, you're making wrong assumptions, something this and that. You know, I'm um, looking into this, uh, this booster thing returning, the booster rocket. And so let, let's just look at this. This is a Wikipedia... Um, uh, nice little picture that they have here. We have the rocket launching, and uh, then it separates. And I guess it's a big, big deal for the engines to start up again because they have a whole, whole thing over here on the Wikipedia thing about a uh, restartable engine ignition system. Okay, so it engine fires once at the ground, lifts off, and then it's got to turn around. It's got to fire again. And then it's my understanding that it's under free fall. There's no parachutes, right? The only thing is uh, these grid fin things, which I, I think are a little bit uh, dubious uh, to control it. But uh, I, don't, I don't think that they're going to affect its terminal velocity. I, I believe that, you know, up here, there's going to be very little air. It's going to get going really fast when it's coming in. And then it burns once to uh, slow down in the atmosphere, is my understanding. And then it comes down, and then the rocket engine restarts again uh, upon landing, so it can land on the uh, drone ship out in the ocean. And I'm going to take a look at this, and I'm going to make some assumptions, do some simple calculations, just to see uh, where I think this rocket should be compared to where uh, NASA said it was in the video footage. And we'll look back at that, too. And... Um, I think that there's something kind of strange going on here. <clears throat> and uh, so my assumptions, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. It's, it's actually difficult to um, do uh, terminal velocity calculations. I'm not an uh, aerospace engineer. I'm an electrical engineer. But um, I believe, you know, I, I do understand a lot of physics and the other sciences, and that um, based on what I know about that, the terminal velocity should be very high. I mean, the rocket <laughs> goes at extreme speeds when it's being launched. Of course, it has a lot higher force. It has the force of gravity pulling it down, and it's aligned to be very aerodynamic, so it should have a very high terminal velocity. And with, with that one assumption, I believe the rocket hits the ground before uh, th this first burn occurs. But let's, look, let's look at the uh, calculations and the launch, okay? Okay, so now we've looked at how the trajectory goes, and um, let's let's just look at the actual launch that NASA gave us. And I'm going to start at the beginning. Beginning is a good place to start. And here we're launching at T minus zero seconds. Okay, and here's our launch, and everything goes fine. And then uh, we're going to zoom ahead to, uh, we'll say, uh, th three minutes. Okay, into this video. And separation occurs at about, we'll say, 240. Okay. Is that right? Let's, let's look back. I think I've said 241 before, but 7, 8, 2 minutes, 
40, 41 seconds. We'll, we'll just call it 2 minutes 41 seconds. Okay. And so this is when the, the, cap, uh, the, the launch vehicle, the booster stage one, is basically going almost horizontal and it's separating from the second stage and the capsule and everything and it's going to flip around and fire a, a reverse uh, thrust which I don't, I don't even really think it needs to because it's so low it's not even in orbit so it's basically in my opinion it's going sideways it's not really in orbit so it's not really going so far away that it's missing the earth so it's basically in free fall at this point you know maybe they're gonna fire the thrusters to redirect it a little bit but um it is basically falling V equals zero. Okay, so this is something important to remember this time. And so now we're going to zoom ahead a little bit to, um, okay, this is about uh, seven, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start here. So now the, the vehicle, the boost stage, stage one is descending. And wait, let's go back. We'll see when that, that first thruster fires okay okay so it's my understanding that this is the first time since it's been dropping because it's just dropping and then it's got aerodynamic uh, resistance which should be very you know should allow it to reach a very high velocity because this is a very streamlined vehicle and it's coming in like a pencil basically so this is the first thing that's really slowing it down other than these ridiculous tiny little grid fin things which are, are not going to change the terminal velocity too much so it's 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 capable of going very fast having a very high terminal velocity which is important and uh, we'll say that this is at 719 actually I wrote down 720 is when the engines really kick up but um, maybe a little bit later so the engines are just starting to ignite there we'll, we'll, we'll say uh, just call that 720 I guess it's somewhere around there because the engines are ramping up now they're at full power so this is actually r slowing it down now so about 720 is the first time that the engines burn to start slowing this vehicle down out of free fall that's that's my understanding correct me if I'm wrong okay and uh, let's zoom ahead a little bit to uh, let's see okay so it's it's slowed down now and um, so now it's going to be coming in and it's going to uh, we're, we're not going to see what's going on and, and right at this point okay what was that nine about 9.22 we lose uh, uh, contact with the camera which means that the ship is close enough that the engines are firing and it disrupts the uh, camera transmission so it's basically coming in for a landing so it's traveled the rest of the distance so um, with those times kept in mind, let's uh, do some calculations, some simple physics, because I love physics. So let's see what's going on here. See if um, things add up and make sense. Okay. Okay, let's do some simple calculations. This is uh, just from basic physics. Uh, if you have a constant acceleration, okay, and uh, you want to know what the velocity is after a certain time and uh, we have a starting velocity then everything is is just mechanical you just crunch through the mechanics and uh, uh, everything's completely predictive right and then we can uh, integrate these equations from calculus right uh, Leibniz or Newton both invented calculus of course and uh, so we have we can get position, and uh, this is the initial position, the initial velocity, and uh, acceleration again, constant acceleration, t squared. Okay, and the final equation will give us velocity. We can rewrite this in terms of velocities and accelerations and positions. And let's start with the second equation because I'm I'm just curious. If, if the rocket just fell out of orbit, and I, I think that um, this is going to be a good assumption because remember, in uh, coordinate systems, especially Cartesian coordinate systems, um, the x here, let's see, we'll call this x and y, right? And here is the Earth down here, and actually this is very close to the Earth, so I'm exaggerating it. These are independent acceleration in the X is not dependent on the Y like if you shot a bullet out this way 
it would still drop at the acceleration of gravity even if it's traveling vertically and, and let's let's be honest about this this is like right close to the earth this is not like a orbit thing where you know the y velocity is going to cause it to miss the earth or something it is very close to the earth so i think that assuming that the initial velocity is zero is a good assumption it will be close to zero and what's going to happen is actually the acceleration of gravity is so great it's going to overcome any initial velocity anyway and as we saw in the trajectory uh, this rocket ship was actually going horizontal okay so um, <clears throat> let's uh, let's rewrite these equations okay okay so before we start let's let's just write down some givens some knowns and so we're gonna say H which is gonna be our X of course is going to equal to we're told that it was if you watch the video it separated at 82 kilometers which is 82 thousand meters And let's do this in MKS, because we love MKS. MKS is easy to deal with. Meters, uh, kilograms, seconds, right? SI units. And um, acceleration is going to equal, well, we'll just call this G. G is our acceleration. A equals G equals 9.8 meters per second squared okay so uh, let's just rewrite this equation here we're gonna set V 0 equal to 0 which I think is a fairly good approximation and because uh, it's traveling horizontal and we'll we have a right to choose whatever coordinate system we want so we could set the X equal to 0 and just measure distance downward say that where it's separated is actually zero position. So we will have v squared equals 2a x. Okay. And so let's let's uh, figure out what v is, right? Okay, let's do some calculations. So let's let's take the square root of both sides. So V is equal to the square root of two A X where A is really let's just rewrite A is square root of a is equal to the acceleration of gravity g and x is equal to the height okay and uh, I actually did that calculation up here on our spreadsheet here's the height acceleration of gravity and square root of two times the height times the acceleration gives us about 1,267 meters. So, an object in free fall dropping this distance that they give us, 82 kilometers, the final velocity should equal to, okay, and we don't need to use this other than the fact that, um, our assumption that the terminal velocity is less than this okay so if the terminal velocity v terminal is less than this then our next calculation will be a good approximation which i think that's not really that fast i think uh, 
the terminal velocity as long as it's not really slow you know there's no parachutes on this thing there's nothing you know it's coming down like a pencil it's coming straight in like this so it's going to be going pretty fast i don't think that it's the air resistance is going to slow it down that much this this calculation is complicated so i'll save that one for later but i, I think it's a fairly good assumption that the terminal velocity is is probably uh, greater than this number and, and even if it's less than this number it's 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 not going to change the results unless it's significantly less like 200 miles an hour or something you know th then it might change the calculation but even in the upper atmosphere there's there's no um the air is a lot thinner up there so it's going to travel a lot faster the terminal velocity will be much higher and even in the lower atmosphere i, I don't think this is unreasonable that the terminal velocity would be faster than that or, or at least uh, at least half that it would have to be as I showed before uh, that that distance is tra uh, trans tra traversed in about if you assume an average speed of uh, 500 so so even if the terminal velocity was half that uh, we would still have problems here with uh, the official narrative okay so let, let's look at our next equation um, we want to um, do some calculations to see how much time it's going to take to travel that distance okay and I'm like a same assumptions before I'm going to choose x0 to be 0 because we can choose any coordinate system we want to be there we can we can choose it to be 0 at any position so the calculations will be simpler if I set that equal to 0 uh, v0 the, the vehicle is traveling horizontally so and in uh, this direction it's basically zero velocity and uh, so we'll make that assumption there and we'll rewrite this equation okay let's start again a new set of equations so we'll have X which is really our height X is equal to one half acceleration times time squared okay and so now if we solve this for time right we have t is equal to I'm going to skip a few steps bring the 2 over there so it's 2 a x and I did a square root of both sides okay so time is equal to the square root of 2 times ax and of course in our case a is the acceleration of gravity and g is the height and so if we look at our equation here here's our second calculation okay and here's height in the acceleration of gravity and in our spreadsheet we have the square root of two times the height it's the acceleration of gravity and this is in seconds so basically this is the time from when the caps the uh, booster separates from the rest of the rocket and we have miko miko Till the time that um, uh, basically it would hit the ground at this distance. Okay. And uh, under free fall, assuming that it's not slowed down by terminal velocity, my calculations say it would take 129 seconds, which is two minutes uh, and uh, 15 point 15 which uh, that's not seconds but that's uh, 15 tenths of a minute and uh, I didn't convert that but anyway a little bit over two minutes so let's look at the separation time so the entry burn occurs at uh, t, t minus 7 minutes 20 seconds. Okay. And there is 
that entry burn beginning as balance. And the uh, ship separates at two two uh, minutes forty one seconds. So basically, at two minutes forty one seconds, it's in free fall, and the difference in time between those two is about four minutes and thirty nine seconds. So it's free falling according to the NASA video for four minutes, over four minutes and a half, and according to our calculations, it would have hit the ground in a little over two minutes and and if you look at the video it's not even really close to the ground it's way up in the air a little over four, four minutes, minutes 41 seconds, seconds into the flight, into the flight. okay so here is the uh here's a space capsule with the astronauts in it and here is the dragon capsule or the the falcon booster dropping still and this is about after the time that we calculated that it should have hit tw the ground 20 some seconds ago in free fall and it is still it looks like it's way up in the sky still I mean it's way far from the earth so for some reason this uh, <clears throat> and like I said the terminal velocity should be very high it's shaped like a bullet it should be traveling like a bullet and uh, our simple calculations if you believe basic physics it should have hit the ground uh, over almost a minute ago and it, it's not even close to the ground right now it's like way up in the air so, something doesn't add up here something's not making sense this is this is uh, doesn't seem right and supposedly they haven't even had the first burn yet the first burn to slow it down so it has been in free fall for minutes and minutes and uh, it is way up in the air, and my calculations say if you, if you, F equals M A, right? Very simple. It should have hit the ground by now already. Something's not right here. Okay. So unless there's you know a very slow terminal velocity, it reaches terminal velocity way before this uh, figure of uh, 1,267 meters per second, which I don't think it would because it's a uh, pretty aerodynamic uh, rocket type of thing. It's designed to go fast and it's going to be kind of heavy too. It's not like a parachute or something. There's no parachute on it. I don't think the grid fins are slowing it down that much. So we're, we're looking at the rocket hitting the ground, not being way up in the air like what they show, but actually hitting the ground before it's even slowed down by the first burn. And remember, it's, it's a big deal to turn the engines on. I didn't see the engines on in any of the video footage, although the the camera wasn't on the engines. The official website says it, it only burns a few times during the flight. You know, one, once to turn around, uh, once to uh, slow down at this point, and then once at the ground. And so I'm assuming that, that it's not burning the engines and at any other point in the flight. So according to these calculations, it would have hit the ground. It, would, it wouldn't be way up in the air like what they're showing. It would, um, you know, th th this is, uh, this just doesn't add up. The uh, rocket, I believe, would have hit the ground. And, and these assumptions that I'm making, I don't think, are really, really that extreme. You know, that you, you can argue a little bit here and there, but uh, I think that we're way off here. I think there's something, something funny going on here because it doesn't seem to make sense. Even if... You say, well, there was some small velocity or something. I don't know. I mean, I guess you could make up some excuses, but it, it, it um, I, I think that these assumptions, you could say the terminal velocity is really low, which I don't think it is. Okay, so let's do some more calculations. Now, uh, the previous calculations that I did that showed that the rocket would uh, hit the ground several minutes before... Um, before they even fire the first thrusters to slow it down, uh, depended on the uh, calculation of the um, terminal velocity. And so I was looking up just as a rough estimate, uh, what's the terminal velocity of a bullet? And how do you calculate the terminal velocity? And uh, it actually depends on the weight and the, the uh, cross-sectional area that the, uh, the um, 
the, the vehicle is seeing as it's traveling through the air. And since it's traveling straight down like a pencil, it's basically going to be the cross-sectional area of the rocket, right? So here is the Falcon 9 uh, version 1.1. I'm not sure if this is the same one that they use, but it's probably close enough. It has a... Uh, we're going to need two things. We're going to need the diameter of it, which is, uh, according to Wikipedia, 3.66 meters. And we don't care about the height because it's coming straight down, right? It's got the smallest diameter possible, so it's going to have the lowest air resistance. And we care about the mass, which is uh, 505,000 kilograms. Okay? So keep those two numbers in mind. And we have this handy dandy little calculator online, which I don't This is a terminal velocity calculator. And, uh, oh, I put in the previous rocket. This was about 505,000 kilograms, right? And the area, if you take uh, 3.6 and divide it by 2 and multiply it by uh, square it, multiply it by 3.1415, you get about uh, 10.5 square meters as the uh, cir circular area of the, um, the, the rocket. And the drag coefficient, they say, well, if it's of an aircraft, it's about 0.03. Medium density is 1.5 uh, at sea level. Mind you, it's going to be traveling a lot of it, a lot of its uh, journey much higher than sea level, so the density will be lower. And uh, I think these are good rough numbers. Let's calculate what the terminal velocity should be. Okay, and it's it's telling me that the terminal velocity is uh, 4,500 meters per second. Now, I did it previously, the, the, um, the other Falcon rocket, the smaller one, weighed less, so its, it's uh, mass was only about that much. Okay. And this is the meters per second. It's the same units that we were calculating before. And remember, on our spreadsheet, the highest velocity that it would get, if it didn't have any, any uh, uh, drag on it, would be 1,200 uh, meters per second. And uh, we're having a terminal velocity much higher than that, so it should reach pretty much full speed. And uh, so according to my calculations, I think that there's uh, something fishy going on here, because I think that the rocket probably would have hit the ground. Unless there's uh, something funky about this, uh, you know, math, uh, terminal velocity calculator, but I think the numbers that I put in were reasonable. They're from uh, these type of launch vehicles using the types of weight that they're claiming and the types of uh, cross-sections that they're uh, giving us in Wikipedia. So I think the rocket probably would have exploded, would have hit the ground. Boom! Okay, so we did some calculations that uh, showed that if um, the terminal velocity was very high, that I believe that the uh, Falcon uh, uh, SpaceX uh, booster would hit the ground way before uh, its first burn, which is supposedly the first burn to slow it down of its uh, engines. And uh, so then I was questioning the ther terminal velocity, so we did some uh, quick calculations of terminal velocity using uh, some online calculators and approximations based on um, uh, the weight and the, the uh, physical dimensions of the uh, booster rockets. And uh, so now let's just see if this makes sense. Now let's, let's look at uh, other things that NASA claims to have done. And I question everything because I think everything from the official media is a bunch of lies. But um, it, it should all be consistent at least, right? I mean, if it is if it is true, it should be consistent. And here's the Mercury Project, and that's where, let's just look up here. It uh, was the first human space flight uh, is to put a man in Earth orbit, okay? And uh, so it's just a, a rocket similar to SpaceX, and it would have a capsule that people would come back down in and um, that capsule 
is um, okay. Let's see. So it's coming down from orbit, and uh, we didn't see any heat shields. See, they're talking about ablative heat shields as it re-enters the uh, atmosphere. Okay, because it's going so fast. Right here's a blade of heat shields, so it can stand the super high temperatures from super high velocities. But uh, also the space shuttle would go up. Oh, see here, here's docking with the ISS. But but the space shuttle also had heat shields on the bottom of it because it was going so fast and it didn't even come straight down. It came down and it did this S curve. See, it has this arrow breaking S curve. Uh, I should I should find that. Anyway, they're talking about going at speeds hypersonic, Mach 5, and it says it reaches uh, speeds of. Uh, where was it? I think it was Mach 25. Mach, Mach 25. There it is. It's traveling approximately Mach 25. Okay. It's using uh, different angles of attack, and it has heat shields on the bottom. In fact, that was what failed on the one space shuttle. But let's look at Mach 25. So that is over uh, 8,000 meters per second and it's not even coming straight in, he's coming in at an angle and doing these aerodynamic turns uh, <clears throat> so it's way faster than the calculations of the terminal velocity that uh, we are calculating for uh, the SpaceX rocket okay let's just look at this Yeah, see, there's uh, pictures, these cartoon things of the air getting so hot that it um, catches on fire, basically. I saw an image a long time ago of the S-turns. No, I'm not seeing them. The Internet's always constantly changing, and they're always deleting stuff. Yeah, the Challenger. Supposedly one of the uh, space shuttle missions blew up because a uh, heat tile came off the bottom and it got so hot it just burnt the spaceship up because it was going so fast. Look at this. Here we go. Docking with the ISS. And constant drag. Here we're doing the S curve, and the shuttle is getting so hot it's catching on fire as it comes in from uh, from the orbit. But uh, but our SpaceX rocket doesn't have any heat shields. It drops without. It's just going. Got these little grid fins, whatever they are. Uh, flopping there out in the, the wind and uh, it just drops straight down for several minutes at, at the point where they're claiming that these things are heating up super hot and need heat shields anyway something to think about so anyway it looks like the ISS is actually at 400 kilometers where the uh, booster rocket actually wasn't at the top of its orbit uh, it was only like 82 kilometers when it separated so that other picture I guess was just deceptive but um it would still be uh, you know terminal velocity of these vehicles is going to be the same right and if, if uh, the space shuttle has a terminal velocity of Mach 25 or 8,000 uh, kilometers per second coming in at grazing angles the terminal velocity of uh, our spacecraft would definitely be at least you know a thousand kilometer uh, meters per second and so I think that uh, something's fishy here and uh, I think our rocket would have exploded
Anyway, uh, tell me what you think about these calculations. This is uh, Dr. Jaynes, and thanks for watching.